Hi everyone, welcome back to the abstract painting week five this is. We're going to do uh, some introducing people into a scene. There'll be all sorts of different scenes you could do that with I suppose. Um, but I picked something with quite a lot in it. So this is a... Uh, I had some pictures on my phone of uh, some streets in Barcelona a few years ago when I was there. And I was just picking different pictures, different scenes and different figures on my phone. Just It's a good idea just to scale through your phone all your photographs and you can get good ideas for different positions and diff take them from different pictures and just make it up as you go along. So I just wanted to mention there's two here that I've done earlier. So this was the first one that I did and I've got all the people, I don't know if you can see that, you can zoom into that, but um, all the people in it I'm just going to show you really about it. I just get my buildings in, threw them in first for a loose brush, no detail or anything at this time because by the time you fill everything in, most of the buildings are going to be covered. So um, what I did, I wanted to be mark where my vanishing point was, but it's very loose, it's abstract, so it's very, very loose. So what I did, I had a little line along here, a little zoom, if you can see it, and I coloured that all in really, the paint's grey, purple's really dark. And then I took my white on my brush and put in all my wee figures at the table. That was good fun to do that and it made sense at the time doing it. But then when I went to put in my foreground figures, I felt as if, oh I can't put that in there because it's covering that wee woman sitting there or vice versa. So it kind of restricted me as to where I wanted to put my figures. So, and I actually felt at the end of the day the figures were a wee bit on the small side in the whole grand scale of things, but although that could be sorted, I can, bring, can cut this down and bring it down, but that's not a problem. But, in order to this one, this was the second one that I did, and I just, I did my wee zoom thing into my horizon layer, just the same, coloured it all in dark first, but I didn't put my figures in first, sitting at the tables and the cafes. I put my foreground figures in first and then I went back to the background to see what room I had. And if you look at this zoom being big here and being small there at the end of the street, that's a good proportion gauge for doing your figures. They'll get smaller, you're keeping them in that proportion all the way along. Same as these as well. Okay, so I'm just going to get started and I'll just want to show you some wee tips and how you go about that and it's very very loose so it's it's not as detailed and complicated as it looks it's honestly it's very very loose I could probably go back and spend a good few hours doing more detail in that but it can I grab shape it's quite good fun as well so what I'll do is I'll give you the introduction to the brushes again so if we zoom into these brushes this is your big brush if you've got your pack these should be in your pack so you've got a big brush like a number 10 wide flat you might even end up a number 10 round one, which is fine. It's mainly for doing big areas and skies and things. This brush for this particular picture, I seem to use it the most. This is used quite a lot for flowers and things like that. It's between a number 6 or an 8, just depending on the brand. Quite a thick head on it, a nice wee point on the end of it. So that was great for doing the figures. And you would think that I would want to do the figures with a wee tiny brush for detail. But as I go into the picture, I'll show you why I didn't use that. A couple of times I picked that up and I went to use it. And what was happening was I was getting into detail. And I don't want detail. I just want it to be really loose. So this has got a nice wee point on it for some finer detail. When I say finer detail, just wee impressions. Um, that does the job. And I found it when I was working with that. It was making me zoom in and do more detail and more detail and I didn't really want that. So I was using that most of the time. And my wee flat brush, this is good for doing windows and marking out things in your trees and all that as well. Okay, so they four brushes you should have in your set. If not, that's the kind of brushes that you want to be using. Something similar to that. Okay, so spare palette again for mixing. And I basically just kind of not in any order, but put quite a lot of different colours on it, you can see. I would say mostly when you go into white, you have titanium white, nice opaque white, make sure you've got a good white because you could be there forever going back, top up the highlights if you don't have a good white. So titanium, 
uh, white is the best one. And one of the other colours that I used mostly for the skins and things like that, and even the buildings, was burnt sienna. And I've got a nice lemon, kind of cool lemon that's good for the trees and things like that as well. And I've got a nice rich uh, caffeine yellow as well. And then I've got Payne's Grey, that's good for all my shadows and marking out my dark areas. And my blues, I've got um, my ultramarine and I've also got uh, a really good pink which is a uh, magenta. And they're really good for making a purple and you can darken it down with the Payne's Grey. And then I've got a nice serenium blue as well. And of course I've got a nice leafy sap green as you can see in some of that in the picture. Uh, you might not have Serenium in your set and if you haven't I'll show you how to make that up to get those nice kind of turquoise things going on and get a nice deep red as well and if you don't have pink, the deep red with your blue makes a good purple as well but don't use the orangey reds, orangey reds with the blue will just turn brownish instead of purple so you, you want it more pink and a nice sharp blue okay so that's us good to go, and that's for spare palette there. And I have a couple of pots of water because you'll be changing the water quite a bit. There's just quite a bit going on in it. Right, so I'm just going to start now and just plug the tissue as well. I find really good to tissue with this. So I'm just going to start with my big brush just to get started and get quite a lot of coverage done. So it's a little marker. I'm just going to use a lot of the peel blue in the now. It doesn't matter what blue. But I'm not looking for anything to be exact because it's just endless. So again, I always give myself a halfway mark there and a halfway mark there and it's just a dot. Now, if I water that down just a little bit, I just want to be sort of dotted line there. Because what I'm going to do, see that's a horizon there, that's about there. And then you just do your zoom line right up to the hive like that. So that's the line there. So you're kind of going half, almost half again. And you're just kind of graduating that right up. Make sure it's past the middle. Because it would be too noticeable if it was in the middle. And you can just go over the horizon a tiny wee bit as well. So with that little bit that's there, I'm not going to wash my brush out too much, but I'm going to do a nice purple. So we'll go with the pink and the blue and we'll make a nice purple. And that's quite dark and some things grey in it for extra darkness. So what I'm going to do there is just throw that on there like that now. Really, really dark. You can use plenty of water with this. It doesn't matter if it drips either because you can clean that up. But um, just all this covered as much as you can. So that's going to be the area behind the canopies. And I'm just going to bring that a little bit now. So I just want that to dry a bit. Soak it up a bit like that. Okay. Right, I'm just going to clean that now. And this is where your white's good. You can just take lots of white at that side. And just kind of bring that through just to sort of soften it in. That gives you a nice kind of focal point round about there. Just going to get a little bit there. Okay, so it should start to sort of fade a wee bit there. Okay, so I'm just going to wash my brush now. And for the buildings, this is your horizon line. So everything over the horizon line as far as buildings and streets go, the lines go down, the aerial lines go down and everything under it, the lines go up towards the horizon so that's how you find your focal point and that's just an easy thing to remember um, it doesn't need to be dead straight there now because I'm going to be doing lots of things to camouflage all that so I'm just going to take my dark blue here just so that you can see the mixture of it just so that you can see what's like in there um, so I'm just going to, not quite at the top I'm just doing these sort of dotted line, not too severe. Cross one, and we'll just sort of go by the middle just to get an ending on it. And you can do whatever you like there. I'm not paying too much attention to the buildings, to be honest with you here. 
it's more the figures, this picture, but I'm just going to put wee bits of interest in. So there's a wee matchbox there, with a wee roof on there, and there might be a few wee interest in buildings and things going on there, just for the background. But this girl is getting a bit big now, so I'll get rid of this one, just give it a wee clean. Got all the colour in line, like water with it. So, um, what I'm going to do now is go to the flat brush here and load some white and uh, actually I could maybe just use my big brush for this as well, it'll be quicker. So loads of white, a little bit of lemon, if you can see this mix here, just a little bit of lemon and just a little spot of the sienna. And it just gives you a nice sort of creamy building. Plenty of water on it. I'm just going to mix more than I need because I'll probably go back to it. Plenty of water. Right, so basically I'm just pouring these in. You can see how loose this is. Bigger volume of paint would be better because you're, you're going to keep going back to these kind of things. So. interested in a lot of uh, detail at the moment because most of this build is going to be covered with things in front of it but just to get an impression in the you now. Sometimes it's good to keep it something on a slightly darker like that and then you can peel it down with little bits of your white when the sun would be shining. Um, so you can take your white as well, and the white's good for sort of blocking some of the lines. Just keep your perspective going, everything's sort of pointing down, even if it's going down in stairs there, it's pointing down. And these wee bits will probably be a wee bit darker, but we'll come to them later on. So uh, that one can maybe go slightly darker. But loads of white in the brush, so it's mixing well. <laughs> So you can see how there's some being with these and that lot there is a little bit darker. Take it right up to your blue. Blue is always good. Ultramarine or cobalt blue is quite a good blue to use as an outliner instead of sketching it. Some people sketch it and then go over it with the blue so that they can see the lines. Because it's hard to see your sketched lines with the lead pencil. Um, but blue is a good colour to use because it's a neutral tone and it has to shadow sometimes in between things so it's, it always comes in quite handy a lot. Okay, so I'm going to put this big brush down now and go to my smaller brush. And uh, I've got a wee bit of white on this so all I'm going to do is just put wee bits of white streaking here and there. So it looks a bit brighter. Uh, I'm going to clean that now and get some of that nice purple I made up in there. And I don't know if this is a roof or not, I just can't know. As I say, I'm not too bothered about what this is at the moment, but we'll see. It's like a wee sort of, it's a floor level anyway, or a roof, it's a level of some sort, but it's just a perspective line going down there. So we can get back to the detail later on and you'll find that by the time you've done all your figures the detail is much less that you need to do. You'll have a see in that by the time you're done. Um, I'm not even going to bother putting a sky in with you at the moment. I'll just maybe put a base of white on the middle there. On most of it. This is just really like covering the core. And I'm going to go for a little bit of the peel. I don't really want much new colours on that. Big brushes, put lots of paint on, so just take loads of white. 
Thank you, dear Tia. Next guy, let's see. Take a seat, Elaine. That's okay. So that is basically just a sort of base, you know. Um, and what I'll do is, I'm just going to give the base at the bottom as well, nice and quick. But I'm using a big brush, so the big brush spreads it out so that it's not thick, as in you can't paint on it, it's too thick. So, a kind of thin layer, but not a watery layer, you know, just so that you can. And sometimes I put wee bits of the purple through it, just like that, so it's not pure white. Loads of white. I mean, you can put more white out in your palette for this picture than you would normally put out. There's loads of wee highlights on the picture, as you can see. Oh, just going to. Put this here this time with loads of white and a little bit of the, the lilac just at the bottom. So it's just giving us a wee thin base to work on. Um, and then we'll just get a wee sort of paint grey line just to sort of finish that a little bit. Tidies it up a little bit. Okay, so while I've got the big brush out as well, we could do a couple of markers for the trees. So a wee bit of paint's grey and a bit of white, and you can stick a wee bit of sienna in it as well, so it's just a rough mix. So try not to put anything bang in the middle of your picture, try and take it off a little bit so there might be one. Make sure your water, you've got plenty of moisture on your colour as well, or it'll just drag into a dry line if you don't. So just take that up like that. Take that up like that. And then you can use your smaller brush now, same kind of thing. These will be a wee bit sharper, um, grey up here just so that you can see them. When you're doing a branch, you do another wee branch off that branch and so on, and each one gets smaller. Some of them can come down as well. And if I clean that brush, dip in a little bit of white, and just while it's wet, just drag a little bit of white down through it. And that gives you quite a nice colour. They're almost like silver birch, but I don't know what they are, the trees are, but. They're always quite quite dry looking. So I'm going to do this again with another little bit of paint grey, paint grey and the brown. Anything else gets dark. And so there's a lot of I'm going up there as well. Doesn't have to have two bits on it, but just taking it off that amount. Not even when you see a lot of the bottom and then they'll be covered. So, what I'll do with that, a little bit of white. And if I just do one in, that's fine. Right, I'll go back to that later. So, the paint's grey with a little bit of brown is actually quite good as well to mix for the, the windows. Now, I'm following this line going down here, so the best thing to do. It's just do one like that, one like that, and they should get a wee bit closer together because they've got the small ones. You probably won't see that one behind there. Just like that. So I'll go back and second these them because they're the full down. Anything in the full ground is a bit bigger. So. Right, yeah. although you're following that line, make sure your lines are straight and down A lot of people make the mistake of doing the lines slanted so it looks as if they're all falling. So you just have to go back and sort of straighten them. Not that. But you're keeping the top of the lines all so I can down at that angle along your street. 
paint. I'm not too bothered about detail there for now. Um, but if you like, you can do just a little white sort of canopy thing on there. It's only half orange at the moment. We'll go back and put colour on them. They'll get smaller as well as they go further back. So that's in all and down. Uh, right, so for a bit of a... Uh, I'm going to be using this wee flat brush here for now. Uh, I'm going to be getting in there with a bit of So I'm going to use just one or two canopies. I don't want to do all of them now. I just want to do one or two. Um, just to give you an idea of where we're going here. So the canopies are inside this dark bit. So you're kind of starting up here. We can always add foliage and things in between to bring them right up. They might come down a wee bit more than that as well. So I've got one in the corner, but I want to just start with this one here. So start off a lot bit small to start with. You can do fringes and things on it later on if you like. We'll just get this, this dog on there. I hope you can see that. Um, so that's giving you a start. And we've got one just behind that. Right, we don't have to always sit in perfectly straight either, do you? Slight slant in some. And we'll just. Going to get smaller as we get further back, as we get further down the street. So, so just about that, that now. So, where I've got the canopies now, I might want to put a bit more of this dark and um, purple and grey. Get on in here, so I'm just mixing all those colours together again. Just watch your paint's not too thick. So I'm just getting a bit more room there. The good thing about this dark colour is if you make a mistake or anything at all, you should just go back in and block this colour in here. You see, got a bit more powdery up here, which is ideal for the distance. Okay, nice and dark up here, a bit more black. Okay, so I'm not going to do detail in there right now because, as I mentioned earlier, it kind of put me off doing my figures. So I'm going to do this brush now. This is just an idea for some of the figures. I'll go back and put some detail up there later on. So, um, just going to make sure my big brush is clean in case I have to go out with some white and flatten out wee bits to see wee bit there or something like that. Right, okay, so I'm going to use big brush and the style of figures that I'm going to be using is the mostly the Catman, which I'm sure some of you have seen do before. Um, <clears throat> so this is in the middle, I don't want to put one right in the middle, so I'm going to put one off the middle a bit, but I want plenty of ground here, so I'm going to like remark there where it's going to go. You should my paint's green and purple in there, so I don't want them in the middle. So a little mat there, and I want them to be quite big. These ones I felt would be a bit too small, so I'm just going to go a little bit bigger. A bit here. So I'm going to do just a head, leave a wee space. 
Make sure your brush is good. Find a moisture on it that's not too dry. So just going to do this now. Little carrot man. And just take that down to that line. Now from there I can start doing all sorts of different things with it in detail later on. So I'm just going to wet my brush and without giving it too much detail, I'm just going to put his arm down there and out, put a t-shirt and all that on him later on. And he's got an arm, he's waving to somebody I've got one of these windows I think. But he's got an arm up to get up there. A little bit of skin showing there. So we'll go back to that. And just round about here, he's got his t-shirt sort of. And we're set. And again, we don't want ultramarine, but I can get in there nice and dark. Put your shorts on, so you're just going to do that. The, under, the underpaint is a wee bit wet, yeah, that's why it's going to peel. So you can let it dry and go back and do this, and it might be easier for you. But just go in and put your shorts on there. And a wee gap, like that. And again, you can put it on the back. This is where this is handy, just keep this handy in case you have to do this. So, I'm going to get in now with the skin colour. So, you're using your tissues all the time because you might be changing colour all the time. So, that line's kind of been back a bit, you can have curve on it. And that one's just kind of standing straight. So, we can go back and put detail on that later. And just get some white on his t shirt up there, give him a sleeve. And you can do a bit of his t shirt sort of hanging to the side a little bit. So you can blend that a bit as well. So when it's dry, we'll go back and put all the wee highlights on as well. But these shorts should be a bit darker, but my underpaint is a bit wet yet. Yeah. I'm just trying to get the paint grey on its own. It's a little better, but it's still quite wet. Now it's lighting it again. Um, but that's okay, go back to that. So your shoes, you just put a little bit on the bottom there. Yeah. Just like a little lock. And the same at the other side. You can put white silks on them if you like. And there's a little bit because up there as well. Right, so he's going to have a shadow on the ground. So a little bit of the purple there with the grey. You can soften it with a little bit of white, but I don't think we'll actually need to because it's still quite wet. So just to ground them, put a wee shadow on them there. Okay, so that's one. And now, the good thing about this is you can take this brush and you can just keep cleaning it and you can chisel around about these things to change things up on. So, just going to put my hat there. I'll put my highlights on that later on. That's his hat in. I just keep trying to get that darker, but it's just too late. So, I'll go back to that later on. So, that's fine. Um, and also, as I say, you're changing up things all the time, so you can take a bit of your sienna, make that a bit darker because that'll be in the shade. It might be stretching up there, so you might see a bit of skin there. Okay, so we'll go back to that. Now, I'm all going to do a few different kinds of figures just to show you some ideas. And then you can <coughs> go back and put detail, do what you like on it. I'll take a wee bit of the sienna and the grey, just to make it a little bit darker. The sun's coming through up here, so you can see it shining on the right side yellow canopies, or at the back end where the sun's not getting to. 
So you want to give it more shadow. Give it more than his arm there. Uh, and a little bit more than there because the sun's not going to get a move. Okay, so you don't have to do them all as detailed as that either. So if I take my paint's grey, just to be better than like that keeps it nice and soft. Um, there's another guy over here, so he's a hollow, but he's a little bit further back. But still, it's quite big. If you look at his head, it's enough to go over the top of the tables there, so that's good. You might not see his head here when we're doing this, I might do a little white, just so that you can see it against him. So, you've got his head there. Carrot. Just do it all like that first. Do a little bit more than that. So, he's further back, but it's still quite big. So, again, just get the t-shirt in. Uh, back to my sienna there, just for the arms. He's got an arm coming down like that, and he's got another one coming that way. He's hands his pocket, I think. Um, he's got his face there, and he's got his shorts. So we'll make his shorts maybe blue this time. So just a wee block. For that leg going that way and that one going that way. So quite a sort of baggy shorts. Clean your brush again, you go to your sienna and just get the legs in a wee bit thicker up there and then begin to a point. And that one's going forward. His arm, his hands, and his pocket, you know, there. And that one coming out in the face. So you're just going to do things like that all the time. And then you've taken this little spot here and then the black. So he's got the shoe coming around there. And that one's sort of coming that way. So again, a bit of the purple. And I'll have a wee shadow going that way and that way, and that'll just kind of join up in your the shadow there. Okay, so I'll just do a little bit more of dry my brush. Make sure your brush is really nice and dry. I just put your white highlights in. So he's got a sleeve there, and his t shirt will be quite light there because the sun's coming down that way. So a little bit of highlight on there. And even if he's got a hat on, I can put a colour in that, but we'll have highlight coming from that side as well. And just to fill his face in a little bit more there. Just so you're doing that kind of thing all the time, putting a little darker shadow on his face there. And again, just go back in a little darker bit on the arms and that shows you your highlight that's still there on the arms as well. Just watch you're not leaning on this too much. Clean your brush and you can always get that made up that mix. So just gonna... We'll be changing a lot of these about a bit later on anyway. So that's two in at the moment. I've got another one here and then I'll maybe show you a couple of these things in here. Um, and I'll just show you how they get a bit smaller as you get further back. But I'm not going to do every figure because it's going to take far too long. That was a good couple of hours doing that and there's still some detail could go into that. So I'm just going to be showing you a few different figures. Doing the figures for the composition in this picture is just about like doing trees in a forest. There's loads of trees in a forest but you don't want to paint everyone exactly the same. So there might be two or three that stand out at different levels like that. And you can, it's really good fun once you get into it, you start making them interesting and you get a bit better and a bit better at doing each one. Okay, so I just want to get some of these done. So what I might do this time is just clean my brush and get a little bit of, um, put it on quite thin first. And I, I've changed the figures up, just different styles and things like that as well. 
So I'm going to put a little bit of white in this. And this woman here is standing in front of this canopy. And she's facing that way, so just watch her head doesn't go too high. She's a tiny wee bit lower than him. So, wee head first. Wee carrot figure. She's got a backpack on, so you can't really see her other hand. But we'll see. So we'll bring that down there, but that's her waist there. And then she's got a long skirt on. So you can do that all the one sort of colour at the moment, and then as long as it's pale, you can go back in uh, with your colours. So firstly, once again, with her face, she's kind of facing that way, and it'll overlap a few things. So she's got that going on and then she's got her wand here. So a little bit of lemon and it doesn't matter if you put a tiny bit of green. Again, I'm just still using this wee brush. We shaped her head. And her hair's kind of out. When you're using lemon over any colour, you're better put white down first. So, um, you can go back and put lots of wee details and things in there. It's going to make her face a tiny bit darker in there and her neck and her arms. Some sunglasses on her. You can use your small brush for this if you like, but you don't want it detailed, so you can just do something like that. Okay, so there's just a few little figures in there than now. And you can just do the impression of her feet. So just from the bottom of her feet. Before you know it, you've covered in quite a lot of the light ground, and so it's like to see bits of sun shining through. Okay, so right along here there's wee pots. So I'm just going to put a few of them in and out. And again, they are I don't see any of but if you put a bit of paint grey, just to get a green mark on them. So I'll start with the one here. But, so it gives you quite a good release for the start of the cafe. Be sure what it does. So they just sort of get out of the way. But I'm not too bothered with it, too much detail in that now. Just put these in. So again, they're a bit smaller as we go along. So easy to fill them in. Take your big round brush again. You just get lots of green bits of lemon and I'll give them something dark later on. But I tend not to do these to the tables or anything, but it's just to kind of fill in some spaces so that I know what I'm left with here. So just put them in like that and then we're going to put flowers and things in them later. And they're all, everything you're doing is just be markings like this. It's going on in. A bit dark and make them stand out as well. Okay, so I'm back to my little flat brush again. I'm just going to paste a little mark for some of the tables. So some of the tables will just be sort of sitting like that. So that gives you, you know, quite long, so that gives you an idea where you're putting some of your figures and there may be some other tables in the background as well. I think there's another canopy up there so much. 
from the back. Okay. So this is where you can maybe use a smaller brush, you know, just to do, actually a pointy brush, just to do some of the smaller figures. So I'm using white along with the sienna, just to keep it nice and white. And the best way to do about this is, I'm just watch these might get marked, but you'll, you'll probably let these dry first before you work on So going for a figure there, it's like a carrot, so you're doing half a carrot there. And we'll put clothes on in a minute. And somebody might be sitting there. And somebody might be sitting there as well. So it's a carrot, but it's coming down and it's folded down this time. We'll tell you that the chairs are in that look okay. So again, just lots of wee heads like that, where you're going to put people. Leave a wee gap and do a bit of the body. Once we've got chairs and arms and clothes and everything on them, they'll look all right and a lot of things will be covered. Now, I think I need a bit here, I had a wee waiter or waitress coming out of here, so a wee bit higher. Carrot again. So, Take the white off my brush now and go into the sienna. And if I put a little bit of white there, I can carry the tree. And a little bit more sienna on the face. And if you like, you can clean that and put a bit of Payne's Grey straight on so it's almost like black. Which might be a wee apron. So where this is black against the dark, you would never do that. So we can go in between things and light things up, but I can take that and brush, take a little bit of my white and mix it if I've got a wee bit of that purple. So it gives you a wee sort of light on here. So you can lighten these things like that. This will be here and then it's really pink, so we'll just put a pink dress on that. And by the time that I put her chair in there, she's sitting at the side, so she might be sitting there on the chair there. And her dress can come down, so something like that. So a little bit of the sienna again, bring up her skin. And a bit more of the face in there. And we'll get her hair in soon. We highlight on her leg. And as I say, these plants will come up round about here so you won't really see that much. So what you can create all sorts of different things, you know, that's just a couple of impressions. Go back to the white here and um, maybe just put in a wee chair around about it. You can dull some of these down as well later on and you can even make the tables bigger as well once your figures are in to get an idea of where you're going. So you're filling that whole area in and by the time that you get all the wee bit get smaller so it might be somebody sitting there and somebody sitting there so there could be somebody standing there that we can achieve again and that person might be talking to somebody we can achieve again um, Two more tables. Just to be half a carrot there. And then get somebody sitting there. 
Now I'm just doing an impression of like say that most of these things have been covered. One, yeah. So get as many of those wee things as possible. And I'll just make these a little bit darker so that you can see them. So a little head and a little cat coming down there. I'll make them a bit more noticeable. A little head and a little cat. Doesn't matter what colour they are then now, you can change that up. So you've got loads of people coming along there and they'll all have shadows in the ground, but I've been doing the wrong of shadows, so this cuts down all the white ground here as well and makes them look grounded. So you can use lots of different colours in here. Um, one of the things I might do here is just got to watch if you're using lots of white, get clean water to clean your wee flat brush. I'm just going to get here with some fresh white. And it's almost like a bit more than halfway around. Just keep it nice and fresh. That's that side, I'll probably fill in more figures, but as I say, it'll take me too long, we can watch me doing every one of them, so um, we'll go back to the, the bigger brush and we might just do one or two figures at the other side. So keep that line that we made up. Now oh, a bit of paint's green, that's quite a good mix. Don't have it too thick, but don't have it too runny either. <coughs> so, um, let's see figures in here. So there might be a few figures over here. And it's up to yourself if you want to put the flower bed in there. It's just a wee point interest. Again, you can even just do one or two so I can now uh, be plant pellets. Doesn't need to be the exact same as that. So, I think there's a, there's a lamp post there as well, but we'll get that in later on. And there's some wee figures uh, right here. Broad shoulders, maybe some smaller. And what you can do then is up to you, you know, maybe you can do your own thing. I think there's a wee girl here as well. So you cut it there. And sometimes if you take the carrot right down across the legs, that acts as a legs and you just colour the legs in. So you've got that and then there's quite a few people up here, a bit small, in the distance. There's a really cluster of them here. And there's all uh, is it or unless you call them that street down the main street in Barcelona and it's just all these stalls and canopies and they're just full, full with people. It, there's a couple of my photographs that I had and it's just black with really just a block. People here all you can see the colour t-shirts and shorts and things like that. So you can do whatever you like that way. You can just make it as busy or less busy, whatever you want. So the sun coming down here as well, these shadows here might have projected slightly down the way. So all I'm going to do here is just going to clean that, get my flat brush, get some of the Risa Terracotta pots back in there. I'll go back in every detail later on. So back to this brush, seem to be using this brush. Long time, so I'm a good brush. 
So I'm going to use this Payne's Grey in green here. I'm just going to get lots of folds going on around here. In fact, this whole area here is filled in with folds, so you get some dark as a base there first. That gives you quite a lot of coverage. And then clean your brush. Much it doesn't matter if there's bits of black still on it, if you get into the lemon, you'll create lots of nice touch in the black, those green and the lemon and black make green. So, lots of bits of that in there. And then you can put more canopies and things across the street. So, before we begin to do any more figures, um, we'll fill in some bits on the building now. So, flat brush again, and in fact, I can actually fill in loads of foliage. Just minded that there. Loads of foliage. Just up above all these here. So, I might be bringing some of them down a little bit more. So, you can see how loose I'm putting that in. As long as you get a mixture of the dark and the light. That sharpens up your camera piece as well. Make sure it's nice and dark. You can throw some lemon in now and again. But this is just taking it away from the dark area down here so that you can't see the purples that I put in there really much more now. This is good for sharpening up the camera piece as well. And it's a great thing to do if you're trying to reshape something. If you don't like something, you can just go back in and reshape it. If something's bothering you, if anything's not right. So, what's the, all this going on? So you can't see that line anymore. And that camouflages the trees as well. To make sure, if you're doing this, that you don't leave any white bits of canvas, cover all of it in. Then go a bit more lemon up there now. As you go over there, you can add a bit more white into these colours and they go quite weak over here because this is away in the distance. You can put some lemon there too. So I can go back to some of those Later on. But you can see what I'm doing here is just basically filling in lots of gaps and making the pitch look busier and busier now. And this is what I mean when you've got these all filled in, you've got less to do on these things. So, what I can do here is take my flat brush. Put my paint's grey and a wee bit in that sienna again. And uh, some of these can come down just a tiny bit more. Just go back and check that you've done them straight up and down and not slanty. So this is a good way of going back and checking. Make sure they're dark enough. So what I'm going to do. I'll do a few of it and like the people, I'll go back in and do some of these later instead of doing everyone the same because that would take too long. I'm going to show you once I get some of them in, I'll put we set of balconies on there. So they've got to be dark enough. The little balconies to show up when we're doing them later. So I'm going to put my brush now. And the good thing is, because I've just let those darks, I can do white, and they won't stay white and do different colours, which is ideal for um, the balcony. So you just kind of go across like that. I'm not worried about how sick they are right now. I'm going to bring my foliage up. As you can see, I'm not going to here with any detail in this, but you can, if you like, you can go back and put some detail in later on. But it's up to you how detailed you want it. So now that's, that's what I'm doing with the 
and a little bit of Payne's Grey just to be season. Most of these are going to be covered anyway. Right, so I can take my brush for the foam jar again, and I can make all the better if you make some of them to overlap, but it comes right up in between some of them. Lots of nice lines there, so that they're, they're well camouflaged there. Yeah. And you can just basically stick them anywhere you want them. If something's annoying, you, you can put it in there. So, you can see it's that to get busy now. So I'm going to put a little bit more dark grey into some of my plant pots here as well. Especially at the tops, just at the top of the plant pot like that. And the darker that they are, the better your plants will come out that you're going to put in. They're just going to be wee dots as well. So I'll let that dry for a little minute. I'm going to mix up this next kind of turquoise colour for canopies. Um, there is a wee bit turquoise on them, and so are these. These are turquoise as well, but there's a wee touch of them on the canopies, and then there's a wee bit of the lilac. So as long as we've used a lot of lilac things down here, green lilacs and shadows, we'll be putting a wee balance of it through. Other bits of the picture, so that makes it look nice and balanced when you do that. So you can see we've got a lot of easy shaft, not darker in here as well. So that's all right. And um, don't worry if anything look a bit squinty, we can straighten them up and put foliage and trees and all sorts of them. So not to bother about that. Another tree to put in here as well. Um, so I'll mix up this little bit of uh, turquoise. So I'm going to take some white. If you can see this. Now, um, now I have. I would normally have. Uh, if you don't have that selenium in your set, I haven't put any viridian or film green out. I would need a bit of film green to mix this. So if you haven't got selenium, what you do is you put a bit of film green with this, so you get a nice minty colour, and then you put a bit of your blue in, and that gives you this. So. I'm just going to use this because that's all I've got at the moment. Um, but I can put a tiny bit of yellow in it just to make it look a little bit more. Try a bit of green, but it's not the right green there. But that's all right. Just want a wee bit of this. This is Serenium Blue, which is quite turquoise, grey and blue anyway. So I'll we'll just put a bit of this on here. And then probably give us some darker tones as well. So you're just kind of covering it. You can put your fringes down there if you like, it's up to you. They'll hang there now because you've got the base is dry, dark base is dry, so you can put a few of them in if you want. Right, so I'll be filming in a minute later, but it takes you a lot to show you all that then out. So one of the other things that you can do too, uh, you can take your wee flat brush and just very loosely, even kind of water, uh, you just go down your sides to them. Not perfectly, just very loose like that. And it just gives you a wee sort of frame of the window. That's all we're looking for. Just go back in there. Okay, so I'll do those detail of those bits later on. Um, so what we're going to do now, this brush again, you can use an even bigger brush 
than this, but this, this thing seems to do it, so a bit of sap green I'm using, sap's a nice leafy green, um, and a bit of yellow. And what I'm going to do is just basically, it's just, the brush has got a wee point on it, so when you flick it, you always get like a wee sort of leaf effect anyway. Just don't lean on it, and then lean on it more, different things like that. And if you put the paints green there, right at the top, that works as well. So quite a lot of them in because that gives you quite a lot of frame line. Now I'm just really splashing that about there. Gives you a nice frame line when you get the dark at the top. And it gives you a bit more depth where the light is as well. So I've got another tree to put in at this side. So I've got paints to on there, so I'll just pick up a bit of white and a bit of my eye look if I've got any left. And there's another wee tree going up over here. So this wee tree can sort of go up over that, that window, if you like. A bit of light. So I'll clean that up and get a bit of my paint green in. Try and get these just falling about all those here so that you're so you can bring some of it down like that as well and you're you're covering quite a lot of the drawing that you've originally done so that's good it saves you can better do in detail to them as well. So some are lighter and some are darker. I'm just going to get up there with a, an extra bit of light. And this one's in the front, so I'll be a bit lighter and a little bit of dark. Okay, so clean my brush again, go back to loads of foliage, green, and lots of lemon. So we start off just using a point and brush quite small down here. And then it goes a little bit bigger as you get up there a bit. But it doesn't look anything until you get these darks in. That's like your sort of frame line. Really, really dark. So some of these can come down quite low. Well. It's just really thick foliage. But you can still see the uh, stems there, uh, the branches. Some nice big yellows as it's coming to where the light is there. There's probably quite a wee bit hanging around about here as well. With the trees in the background there, and that gives that a good wee structure there for the roof. So a nice wee line across there. So you can see how scribble it. I'm just doing scribbles quite a lot of the time. About white now, I think some of them get them really nice and white. Big splashes of white around about here now. So at the end of the day, you can hardly see the detail in those buildings. And you can see if I haven't done anything there at all. I'm just going to go back here a bit fresher lemon and brighten up some of these as well. Okay, so my new plant pot should be dry now, so I'm just going to go back with this brush. You can use this brush or your 
tiny brush, but I'm going to use white and a bit of the pink with it. So I'm just looking for a couple of you to use a very pointed brush, so just a few little bits that look white now. And when that white's down, I'll put some more pink. So every bit that I'm doing last time is making the picture more filled in and a bit busier than right now. So it's pure pink on it now. And they come up quite high as well, so um, that saves you doing all the legs and what's under the table and everything as well, so that's a win-win. Okay, now they've got these shadows as well with the plant pots. So just use your wee flat brush and just a little bit of Payne's Grey, a little bit of pink. Payne's Grey has got blue and white in it anyway, so if you just add a bit of the pink, you'll get that nice kind of line, okay? Tom. So you're just kind of taking a little shadow like that. This is a garden, just where the light's coming in. So, even the shadows fill in blocks of things for you as well. So, it saves you, it saves you trying to fill in bits of the picture all the time. So, then back here with a little bit of Payne's Grey now, well, I've got the flat brush so I can make some uh, little windows on here. So, if you make a couple of wee floors. And the building first, like that, and then just put a few windows in there. Okay, and then you can use this as a room for some of these. There's a few windows going down there. So you don't need to be too detailed. Now over there there's a couple of canopies, so I'm just going to clean my brush. Get some. A couple of canopies over to that. Now you won't see these until I'll put the dark stuff around about. Green's grey, mix it with a purple if you want. So, a little bit of dark down there, down there. And I've got a bit of white on my brush, so I'm just going to clean that off. I've got a bit more Green's grey pink, and we're going to fill in some little areas. Same idea again, we'll be another wee sort of bistro over here as well. So if you get them dark, you just put a few wee impressions of lights and darks on here and it gives you that idea again that there's a lot of activity going on over there as well. And then I'm going to use that dark to freshen up some of these ones. So we're just going on like that all the time. Now, um, I've got some grey and some lilac going on over here for the side. See these buildings because these are sort of like a side facing. So what you can do with these is make them a little bit darker. It's entirely up to yourself what you want to do if you want to add detail. I think I put a couple of wee canopies and things in here. There's like a wee side canopy there. I'll put in. It's entirely up to yourself. And then you can put wee bits of colour on 
one now. That'll be like up to you. Um, you sometimes get these wee terracotta roofs coming down as well. So you've got that going on. And then you can take your Payne's grey and you can sharpen up little bits of the roof. That's good. I've got a bit of Payne's grey and the sear on there, so it's giving me a wee sharp bit there. But after you do this, just make sure you put some more uh, leaves just hanging over it. Maybe we can have a brush, take some white and some lime and things like that. And just kind of make sure you interrupt it. That looks as if that's been done after. So, lots of lemon. So, it's getting busy now, so this is the time you want to stand back from it and see what else you want to do. I'm also going to be filling in a lot more figures and a lot more detail um, into that. So, I've got a wee bit yellow on there, I can put a wee bit more of that in between. If you're putting lemon or yellow onto anything that's dark, just remember basically a wee bit white like that first. Because lemon and white is not good at coming up on top of dark stuff, so you better put a wee bit white down first and you'll get a nicer lemon. And I'm just going to start to make so getting busy and I'm looking a bit too close to it. Okay, so I can put a bit of that turquoise into the canopies now. I've got in yet. Not left yet. There's just a little bit. So if you just put a little bit of like that, and if you get a clean finger, it's nothing more than just a wee smidgen like that. And it's all to the left because that's your shadow. Now, before I do anything else, I'm not even going to clean my brush, I'm just going to put a little bit of the kind of lilac just between the white and the purple, like that, and then just smudging the colour, like that. What you can do as well. They're pretty wet, so I can put a wee bit of um, white, just maybe with a tiny brush, just a bit more white. So when I put my lilac on there, spread the white a bit, and then just smudge the lilac in. So that's quite nice. So a bit more white there again. A little bit of the lilac. And it just kind of pulls in together. And pull a bit more white around it. Now the light will be sort of coming halfway around. This gives you a chance to sharpen anything up as well that you need to. So not the nose. Wouldn't it be quite sharp? Tiny bit of lilac in there. Together. And that gives you a wee bit of uh, colour in between the two, the light and the dark. So I always tend to do that so it just doesn't look too monochrome, just too sort of light and white. So I'm just going to put a bit of this. Just smudge it together. These ones will look super light at the very end too. Okay, so there's quite a few on there that you can get in and sharpen just a little bit more. It's a good white, this you get good coverage with it, so um, there's no point in using anything else if you've not got uh, titanium white and a good make in it as well. Because I've used quite a few whites this week and they just haven't worked, and it just gives you more work. You're going back and Topping up your highlights all the time. Right. Not only have a bit more highlight coming right around just because it's 
that sit at the front there. Uh, I'm just doing that here. And a wee bit of lilac in this is quite good as well because this gives you um, oh, I'm doing a couple of wee trees here actually. This gives you uh, a sense of distance, the lilac as well. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to put a little bit of um, highlight on these. Now these canopies are at the other side of the street and the light's coming down through here so the light will be just hitting the front of these ones here. So, that's quite good to get that in there. And it's up to yourself whether you want to put a little bit of um, blue. You might actually see them a wee bit more on these ones. Now if they come out too strong that's okay, you'll just put the white over just to show you. When you use a colour like this in your picture, um, you might start to find that there's a wee balance of it all over the picture. So what I'm going to do, I'm just using a little brush here. And because I'm still light in these, I can put fresh white on there and just pull a little bit back. Like that. So you almost look smudging over the blue a little bit more. You can see what I mean about putting loads and loads of white out. We'll certainly go through it with this picture. Right, so I'm just going to do a couple of little tiny details and then I'll work on a couple of figures and then I'm just going to leave you to do your own thing because you don't have to put everything I've put in, you can leave out, it's only an idea how to introduce figures into a painting. Um, if you don't want to do a street scene, you could do a beach scene and do figures like this, but it's just like getting different levels of them, they're standing at different levels up and down and the distance like that, so that's, that's a whole idea then. Um, so I'm just going to use little bits of this, give me a wee line on the roof. Uh, if you use that little bit of uh, sienna again, just be using the corner. If you go to the side like that, I don't know if you can see this, it just gives you a little impression of the corrugated roof. And a little bit down there. markers there. Just like to do different wee patterns and designs on it just to make it look interesting. Okay, now I've got a wee bit dark there, the light's going to be coming in as well, so I can shoot a wee tiny bit of light just coming through there too. So you can make that lighter and then put a little bit more of the sienna on it. And clean your brush again and just a couple of little bits of um, white. I'm just being so loose with these. Maybe street lamp to put in there as well, just so, it's, so I'm just going to dry the brush off and what's left in it, just kind of score it through like that, and that just gives you a wee sort of impression of light and dark, you know. Yeah. Right, so I'm going back to my foliage brush again, a bit of yellow and a bit of green, and um, again, there'll be lots of these colours when you've got the paint screen here as well, there'll be lots of these colours going on around here. Sharpen up the chemicals again. So, a bit of paint today and a bit of lemon, and you can put some of these greenery things up here. Some of it's trees, some of it's plants, and different things. It's filling up the picture, that's all we're worried about now. So 
So these little dark bits that's in here, I'm going to just put a little bit of light on the ground there because I've got it quite light looking. So, I don't want it as white as that canopy there, but just some light going in there. Yeah. Now I've still got that wee street lamp to there. What we have to watch there when we're doing that street lamp, we've got a wee guy standing in front of that. So it's just not coming out his head. <coughs> right, so I'm going to clean my brush. This is my wee flat chisel brush, just a wee flat smoothie brush. And I'm going to just take Peel's grey on its own. And Put the street on there. It comes down so far, and then there's a thicker bit on it. And then it's got a wee bit up like that. And that's got a wee kind of point on it as well. So you can do these sort of lines around it like that if you want. And then a wee bit thicker at the bottom. You're not going to see all that because as I say I've got a wee figure there. So I'm just going to put a bit of this figure here. So I'm going to move him over to the side a wee bit like that. Um, he's wearing a white t-shirt at the moment. So we'll just kind of do him like that there for now and I'll take my sienna and looks as if he's got his hands in his pocket and do a bit of his face, maybe put a cap on him or something. Um, <clears throat> so I'll get this sienna on here so I can start sort of getting in with a bit more detail to these figures here. Now I'll probably put shorts or something on the hand, but I'll just put a leg out like that for now. She might even be wearing like a dress, so I'm going just do this pink. This wee brush too much because you just start going into detail and you don't want a lot of detail. Um, I'll just use this for the, the cap and hair and things like that. So he might have um, that on. I'm mean, just going to make it, I'll try and make it um, a little bit lighter. In the street lamp. There we are. I'm going to put some dark blue on him for his shorts. You can do a bit more. I know I've got foliage there, but you can do a bit more. So he's standing in the corner in front of that porch. Um, so I could use a, a little bit of white and a little bit of pale blue here. And I could do this wee guy here. Just like that. And I'll clean my brush there and I'll just use paint screen. These shorts just go in a bit darker. So one leg's going that way, he's walking, and one leg's going that way. 
And when you're finished, there is you could take your every point you brush if you like and just go back and put in some of your highlights. Even on the white hat, we have an extra white. Just like the can piece of white, but you can go back and put in extra white. And so on this wee guy's hat on when you look white. So um, it's just things like that. You can even put in wee white socks on someone where your trainers are, so just put a wee dot of white. And there's some reason the difference that I can make. No, oh, no, I'm a bit. So. Well, I was going to use this as well just to go in with a tiny little bit of highlight just on some of your canopies. So you'll just put like, a little bit there and just rub it in. A little bit there, just rub it in. Just where the light's in. The other thing you can do, you can make the left hand side of the canopy a bit darker as well. But for all that you're going to see of them, Couple of these a little bit whiter, see, and keep topping up. That's a good white, but the white can soak in because if you're putting it on, watch well, you're not putting it on too watery, but there's no harm in going in and just putting an extra wee highlight, it just gives it a better effect. Not going to do this one. Now you can put as much detail if you want, but I mean, I wasn't really going for detail, the whole idea was just to do it sort of very loose almost. So an abstract style, just to put the wee figures in, abstract like that, and then just work them once they're in. So there's a few wee figures to get here and here, so I'll carry on doing that and I'll show you the finished uh, thing. So I think we could just carry on with that now. And also, one of the things you can do, you don't need to do this as much. It's a wee bit paler than that one, and it's a wee bit darker than that one, but you can put like a, a tiny bit of this um, highlight in the, the pinky purple. Like that one. And that just helps to, so it's not just pure white, because at the end of the day, to bring all your three sunspots through, a lot of these bits will be sort of on the ground, like shadows, like that as well. So at the end of the day, you probably don't have as much white. That's what makes it look more um, sunny, the sun coming down in it. So once I fill in quite a lot of these figures that are a bit more shadow, there'll be much less white each one there. Okay, so I hope you enjoy that. And I'll show you when I've done a wee bit more of it as well. But one, one little thing, if you're interested, uh, the last picture we did was the uh, harbour scene, the boat scene. But as you can see here, I don't know if you can zoom in on this, but as you can see here, this was a kids' harbour scene of an abstract. So, so you can tune in to one of the kids' um, videos as well, and you can see how to do that as well. Okay, so it's just a style. 
Well, can you feel that same for like 